<laughs> you had one job to do. <laughs> Which was to be here on time, and I've already missed it. Bang! <laughs> Are we up and running? Yes, I think we're up and running. We have people saying good morning. Yeah, yes. 1060. Good morning, That's everyone. That's it. Hello, gang. Good morning. Good morning. As you see, it's another, yet another guest. Oh, my God, we've been overdoing this so much. You know? <laughs> I need to put the outside camera smaller, I think, because we opened just with the outside camera, so nobody can oh, okay. see us. Oh, okay. Pull it down. They can't yeah. see us yet. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. okay. Just voices. So let's shrink this a little. And let's take the GoPro. Where is the GoPro? Oh, oh, oh. It's called Pengo or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it is. Ah, oh, here we go. But it's showing in the back. Huh? Uh, it's showing in the background. Excuse me, I thought we had all this organized, sorted out. What's up yeah, here? Yeah. So. Oh, it's hidden. Okay, click where it says Pengo, yeah. GoPro, oh, right. and move it up one level. Oh, click so. the up arrow. So here. No. That's going down up. Sorry. Up again, up again, up again. No, wait. It should be here in the top corner. Did we, did you disappear it? What did we do? No. I didn't. We had this ready. My God, we had this ready. Yeah. There it is. No, activate this one. Yeah. Where's the red box? Mm. We must have shrunk it off the... Off the screen. Off the screen. Excuse me a sec. Mm -hmm. We had this up. all set up. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? I what we did. Sorry. Sorry about this. You want to take over? We, we had this all set up, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We and now it's at, it's at the top. It's active. It's visible. There's the outside camera going yeah. down and going up. There's yeah. the desk camera going down and going up. The GoPro. Oh, I know what I forgot to do. Turn it back on. Remember? Turn it. Oh, because of the battery. He's getting yeah. it. Didn't turn it on. <laughs> Idiot Dave here. It should activate itself in a moment so, here. Let's see. It's like, it's like, well, it's showing. Yeah. Here we are, and it's got to be here, and here, and. There we go. My apologies, ma'am. All my so, mistake. All my mistake. So taking it from the top. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Get all the cameras set up and forget to turn them on. Sorry about that. My apologies. This is Japan. What do we all stand here in a row and bow to the... Uh... <laughs> so we were 15 seconds late. I had one job to do and I failed. And Dave, <laughs> and Dave had Dave, one job to do. Okay. No, I had 100 jobs to do. It's so <laughs> Okay. We um, need, actually, this stream now, there's so much gear here, so much going on, that yeah. actually, and this is not a joke, what I need, actually, is a pilot's checklist. You know, pilots have this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even pilots have, Yeah, yeah, but <laughs> they, well, that, that too, the, the finger on the thing. But no, there's a physical, you know, you know, is the airplane turned on, you know, whatever. Yeah. But these guys do this, no matter how much experience they have. <laughs> all right, thanks for your patience. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Have we introduced you? I can't remember now in all the chaos here. This is Mafalda, who was here a few months ago. Yep. Yeah. So I was here in January and I had the exhibition up in the Tokyo National Art Center mm. and I'm back again. So you haven't been in Japan all the time, you've come back no, and forth. No, exactly. Back and forth, back and forth. <laughs> I actually live in Switzerland. <laughs> international jet setting artist here. Oh, really true. So this time you're here for studies with your YouTube Exactly. Teacher. So studies and vacation. So until this Monday, it's pretty much to, to study ink painting, take lessons with Kobayashi Sensei and yeah, and then from next week, Lars, my partner, will come. And um, hi, Lars. You'll be watching the oh, video really, really, from really. Switzerland. <laughs> and, uh, and then we, we do a big holiday the first time in Japan together after, you know, three, four years. So you said, you said Kobayashi Sensei. We, we of course, don't know this. this he's a, a reputed uh, no, ink painting teacher. Ink or, painter, or, yeah. Hmm. So his name is uh, Kobayashi Tohon. And uh, he's very well known in, in Japan. Um, in, in ink painting and uh, he also teaches teaches other other teachers yes. in the meantime okay. because he's now a little bit over 60 so mm. yeah and uh, so wait a minute um, well, a little bit over 60 means means a little bit older than me but oh. still quite young <laughs> okay. by Japanese yes, I wonder where this was going <laughs> you said a little bit over 60 you trailed off like it's going to be the end of the world okay. the genre we're talking about and again for those of us yeah. who don't know you told me before to ink painting yep so we're looking at uh, a 
but paper canvas, not not canvas, look at on paper. Yeah. And this is with black sumi to show. There's yeah. really no colours involved, basically in the traditional So so in the traditional like what you'd call sumiye, you can have like three styles. You can have like the um, hakupyoka, which is the line, which is a little bit actually what you're doing today, starting with the line and the outline of um of a subject. Um but then you have the ink wash painting or suibokuga, and that's just black line and water, and so a sui lot of blurring. Yeah, so the just suibokuga, water, water black, black picture. Picture, okay. yeah. So a lot of ink wash, really. Mm. So, um, and, and that's actually one of the things that I brought to show would be considered, if you look at it very much, suibokuga. Uh, and then you also have boksaiga, which is ink color painting. And that has mostly sumi ink, black ink, but you can use some color Highlights. as well. Really? Okay. So and this is, I presume, all this, this is thousands of years ago, originated in China with the brushes yeah. and stuff. Yeah. It's gone global, but of course, very much in Japan also. Very much in Japan. And so you, you'd find a lot of people practicing it in China, in Japan, Korea. Um, they will all look a little bit different, I think, because then each style kind of evolved on its own. But originally, it all came from China, yeah. and the tools are the same as calligraphy the brush, for the most the brush, part. Yeah. The brushes, yeah. yeah. It's curious for me to ask that because the woodblock printing making that we do, of course, also clearly has roots in China, way, 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 way earlier than Japan. Yeah. Uh, Japanese presumably would have seen this. Some of the technology came over, but once it landed in Japan, the technology. Mm -hmm. moved in a completely different direction. So if you look at a, a Japanese woodblock print from the, the, the famous eras compared to Chinese woodblock prints, the root technology, it's wood and pigment and paper, is all that's... Yeah. The words are the same, but everything's completely different. In your field then, here in Japan, how similar is it? How different is it? I don't know. If yeah. I looked at a painting, could I say, oh, that was made in Japan? You can, I think. I think... Um Japanese, uh, Japanese people, I think because um, everything was linked a little bit to the introduction of Zen Buddhism, but then the, the ink painting in Japan, they kind of uh, always used the white space. The, this notion of keeping always a lot of white space has always been kept very much in the tradition of Japanese ink painting um, for the most part. I mean, um, the Chinese would have tend to fill the space more, and the Japanese to, would leave more empty would space. Would leave more empty space in general. Um, in general, you would see far less use of color in a Japanese tradition. Even when they say they're using color, you would still see far less use of it um, than you would see in a Chinese mm. painting. Um, if, but this is a generalization. Yeah. I think then today mm. it's. You have so many artists kind of experimenting with the medium as well and trying to oh, so now do anything something go, anything new. Goes now, yeah. And, and yeah. so yeah. I don't think you, you would be able to, to identify like schools so much mm -hmm. anymore, right? Um, yeah. If I'd have thought ahead a bit that the conversation would go this way, we should have prepared some pictures or images. I mean, it's not intended to be a lecture here. I'm sorry. Just, you know, <laughs> yeah, what yeah, do you exactly. do and who are you? And, you know, whatever. I'm sorry. So, so let me sure. check them, just to chat a little bit because that's my yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, check sorry. Whether are it turns out that the microphones are turned off actually or something. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, and nobody can hear us and we've been talking all this time. Um, is the audio okay? Can you hear both of us okay? We have independent microphones. I've yes. got one clipped. Uh, it originally was clipped in my pocket. We lowered it because it turned out that I, my voice seemed to be a bit louder than Mafalda's. Her microphone is lower. Audio is good. So good. Yours is actually moving. You've got your sweater. So I don't know if that's banging and making noise or not. I have no idea. So. I've tried to keep my necklace out of the way. Uh -huh. <laughs> so far, so good. These are the just we did talk about this the other day. We now have the uh, Rode wireless go to. I made the investment to get these. Yeah. And so far, the, the reaction it seems that it's working really, really, really well. I'm not using them to their full capabilities yet, but I'll learn as we yeah. go forward. So. Yeah, so people were saying the tools are the same, whether oh, actually the same. Oh, your brushes and stuff? Yeah. yeah. So for the first time, last time, I think someone mentioned in the chat, ink pen lady. Because <laughs> when I travel, I use a lot of brush pens. But for the first time, I have a little portable kit. So you'll see that it doesn't look very different from, um, 
from a calligraphy setup. This one's very basic, so so I just have like a minimum. Okay, but nobody set can see what you've done there, so what are you going to do? Sees that, but There's two ways to do this: you hold it to that camera, or you give them over here for a minute. Them. Yeah, something like that. And I have no idea. You you tell me where. Yeah. And so, so for example, depending on the size, I would work with this one probably for ink, this one maybe for color, and okay, this okay, is for line details. You're, 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 you're talking to people who know nothing about this. Okay, one basic question. It's obviously the thing we in Japan call a fude, a brush. Yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, you know, it's what kind of hair are we talking about here? <gasps> that would be a... Oh, okay, all right. The ones are, okay. <laughs> but the point being, <laughs> in, in, to do Japanese calligraphy, to yeah. do the lettering, the kanji, the writing, this yeah. is the tool that's used. Yeah. And I want to emphasize, because this is something that came to me like, a, oh my God, I can't believe what's happening here. In the West, when we grew up, we have a tool for, we have pencils and, and pens that we draw lettering with, A, yeah. B, C, D, E, F, whatever. And then there's a different name, a thing called a brush. Yeah. And it might have a different shape, whatever, and you put, you put colors yeah. on it and you make pictures with it. So the lettering was a pen or pencil, and pictures, images, were a thing called a brush. But here in the East, China, Japan, whatever, this thing called a brush, fude, is the primary tool for both right. yeah. the, the kanji characters and making pictures. And to me that was a head-exploding moment <laughs> that the realization that every young student in all of these cultures here, China and Japan, when they're learning to write their own alphabet, you know, it, the kanji characters, they're actually drawing pictures. Yeah. So everybody here in one sense, and this is not an exaggeration, everybody here has actually some core training as an artist. Yeah, I, a little bit. I watched my kids do this. There was, the first thing was there was this box, and you had to balance your character within the box. How high, how low, how big, how thick. Mm. I don't, okay, you're in both traditions now. You grew up as a Westerner doing ABC with those three lines on the page, making your A fit and your B yeah. fit. Is there something different in our brains from the two different concepts here? I think this is really, really, really an important thing. I think people adjust, right? They, they adjust to what they're having to, to learn, I think. But yet... Well, you know, of course, the brains get it's formed different... by what we're learning, what we're taught. But my point is, everybody here is an artist. And yet, we, we, first we do ABC, and then, okay, now let's try making a picture. And I don't draw pictures, I'm not an artist. But here there's no such separation. Well, uh, the script, yeah. The script Am I making too much is, of this? Is a picture. No, no, no. I mean, the, the original, uh, the origin of the script are pictograms. Mm. So they are actually coming from original images. Pictures, yes, a picture of a mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. all the time. Yeah. So we're having, someone is saying that the audio, the closed captioning seems to ignore left channel audio. So Dave is missing from the subtitles. Uh, is there anything we can do about that? Well, it's a plug-in, which I don't actually have control over right here. There's nothing I can do right now as I sit here on that. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, we are sending a stereo signal into OBS, the broadcast software. We could try one thing then. I can mix you and me into a mono signal. At the moment, the listeners probably hear Dave in their left ear and Mafalda in the right ear. With one touch of a button, I can mix them into a mono signal. And whether that will... Let's try this. Buttons are pressed. You and I are now a mono signal. Try speaking something here, madam. Yeah. So and we should be going that... into both ears together. The left-right separation is now gone. Oh, someone's saying that's much nicer, the mono mix. Okay. Is well, that better? But well, let's keep talking and let's watch yeah, the feedback. Yeah, yeah, it seems so far the feedback seems to <coughs> So let's see if I missed anything a little bit earlier. Oh, Tina Bess is saying people now learn Japanese with pencils, not brushes. Mm. Yes, of course, in elementary school, yeah. the first thing, my, even back in my daughter's era, this is one generation ago, before they hit a wet brush, they of course were doing this with, with pencils, pencils and pens, yes, of course, so, so, so. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so these three would be really what you call, what, as you said, the fude, and this one is a hake, so this one you would use, yeah, no, I would so. usually have something which is much wider than this. But <laughs> I don't know, can you see what you're talking about? Yeah, this one. They do see it. Just, you see? Okay, yeah, okay. It's this one yeah, here. Yeah. Um, and it's a flat brush. Um, typically you use that for ink wash and um, to wet the paper. 
I'd have a much wider surface, but if I'm traveling, I can't really paint on very big paper anyway. So that's just what I brought. Well, gotcha. We're talking about all this stuff in, in abstract right now. Can you, I did, you sent me a couple of photographs here. That yeah. Can we pop them just to show people like what it is that you yeah. do? Yeah, what sorry, it sorry, is sorry. that I came here to do. She's not going to do this by herself, but I... I Show us your picture. Show us your picture. So, We've got some later. Mafalda brought some actual paintings. We're, later, we're going to put them on the desk and scroll through and have a look at them. So, so stand by for that. So not this one yet. So I was here. Here we go. Yeah, that's that's you, your teacher. Show. This that's is my the teacher. okay, okay. That's um, Kobayashi Tohon Sensei, and um, and this. Oh, this is a preview because this is my painting for the next year's exhibition in Tokyo. Was oh, it not supposed to be public? Yeah, this is not supposed to be. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, this is. Uh, I guess. Um, a preview. Ha ha ha. This Just is for, big. This is big. This is big. So, so this big. is this is the image itself would be about one meter forty high, and I think it's fifty centimeters. It's not actually a hansetsu, so it's not thirty four, thirty five. Uh, are there like are there meters. standardized dimensions for yeah. these things? So there's the full size, what you'd call zenshi, would be one meter forty by seventy, um, and then. If you have Hansetsu, it's half of that, and so it's divided in the middle, so it's still 1 meter 40 and um, 35. And this one is something in the... Um, those are the two most standard ones. And um, does it always have to be vertical? Um, mm, or for this particular exhibition, you're targeting? For this you're, particular you're exhibition, it's okay, easier. Okay. It doesn't have to. Um, I have exhibited, I exhibited one very large uh, horizontal landscape a few years back which was two meters wide by one meter tall. Um, very classic landscape with cranes, but that was... You can't mount that as a scroll, can you? Scrolls, you can yeah, mount vertical kind of, ones, it rolls was, up. How do you mount a horizontal one? Yeah, it was, yeah. A lot of, uh, it was a little bit messy. They, could, they can just add a little bit of um, cloth on top and at the bottom and cut to match. So it's a simpler type of yeah, scroll yeah. mounting. It gets complicated very quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. It's just something for the exhibition. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, so this is, um, so I think I talked about it when I was here. I'm painting like an eight views of Kanazawa yeah, in winter. Yeah, you did, you did, you did. Yes. And uh, I brought one painting um, to Tokyo, which was, uh, which was the one that I brought this year, uh, Descending Geese, Rakukan, um, with the Eastern Gate of um, <laughs> Oyama Jinja and Kanazawa. And I don't. Well, well, I should ask the chat. What is the theme of this my one? next year? <laughs> well, what do you mean? The one you're showing us now? Yeah, exactly. Because it's a hake, so it's well, quiz wait, time. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> but you said you said eight views of Kanazawa in winter. You already told us it. Yep. So all eight views have to be winter. So how yes. do you do an autumn moon in winter? I did a winter moon. Okay, and that's <laughs> so already done. All right, all right, all right. So we're, we're distorting the thing a little bit here. We're distorting okay. a okay. little okay. bit okay. to adjust this because it's just winter. Um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> taking some liberty, creative. All right. So tell me, what is the teeny theme here? Evening rain, very good. Okay. <laughs> Chocolate. Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> For Tina. Um, yeah, so, yeah, umbrellas. Okay, let me ask something. You've got the finished painting here. Yep. Is this starting, I mean, you said eight views of Kanazawa. There's a real place there. Yeah. So how real is this and how much is imagination? Like, so, are you, how much are you making up here and how much are you actually showing as a depiction of what exists? Yeah, so the idea was, the idea to paint the hake came from the first time I was in Kanazawa in the winter. It was right before the pandemic started and I couldn't go back to Kanazawa. So this idea is I'll keep painting Kanazawa as long as I, until I can go back to Japan again. <laughs> but how realistic is it? I mean, you know, it's I'm not getting on, I'm just, I'm just curious. It's how... but let's look at the picture because I did send you the picture that um, um, that was the inspiration for. This is Kenjo Kuen, Ken, uh, Ken, so the, the big Kenjo garden Kuen. in, in Kanazawa. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think if people have been to Kanazawa and they look at that picture, they would recognize it as Kenjo Kuen just by looking at the lantern on the right and, uh, and the, uh, the pine uh, trees uh, with the winter. The winter dressing, the winter yes, yes, yes. You might need to explain what that is. The, Yukitsubi, you no so more. it's something to protect the pine trees from heavy snow. So they don't want so. branches. These trees are manicured to within an inch of yeah. their life. Uh, they're, they're trees growing in one of the most famous gardens in Japan, and nothing, nothing is natural. I, I don't. This is this is what it's supposed to be. It's a human-built 
natural yeah. thing. I mean, this is a big topic all on its own about which I know next to nothing. But when you see a tree in there and it's got some nice shape, believe me, it's got a nice shape because three generations of guys have, have put it there. So they don't want snow here breaking branches, branches and stuff. So yeah. all of these trees, well, most of the trees, the prime ones, of course, you can see the system here, right? They've run a pole up yeah. and from the top there's strings coming down which mm -hmm. connect all through. And they become a work of art in themselves. They are attractive yeah. and interesting and beautiful. Yeah, but everybody goes to, to yeah. see them and everybody's waiting yeah. for the moment yeah. when the snow when comes. Be, yeah. so, 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 so. And here in Japan you do these uh, light up days and these, these gardens, days. This right? is new, these yeah. days yeah. where yeah. you can go, for example, to see the cherry blossoms at night. Yeah. Um, or you can see in the winter in Kanazawa they do light up to see the snow. Um, but unfortunately, on that particular night, uh, there was no snow. It there was, was just heavy rain, rain yeah. heavy <laughs> rain. My shoes got completely soaked. But I said, I don't care, it's the one night where I can go mm. and see Kendrick mm. when at mm. night. Mm. And there was this one couple walking in front of the me in you know, in front of me in the garden ah, and they the were there. both so having the white so umbrellas, so which so I thought was so cute. They were actually wearing almost matching clothes. Um and um and so I just said, Well I think that will be night rain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but you didn't wait a minute, you didn't pose the people. Excuse me, can you stand there? Can no, you stand no, there? no, no. In fact, lights up are very popular times. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what uh, what happens is that you have the people in the garden who are always saying, keep well, going, yeah, keep going. You can't use the tripod to show. You can't set your camera no, up. No, you, can you cannot yeah, have yeah, tripods. Yeah, 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 I just yeah. had literally my smartphone yeah, with yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And But I just thought, that's so cute. I need to take a photo. And, yeah. and there was the, the person from the garden already telling me, please keep going, keep going. Don't hold the bridge. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was on this tiny bridge um, yeah, yeah, where yeah, people yeah, usually yeah, take yeah. the shot of the light. So as far as sitting there and painting a watercolor in real life, this is not going to no, happen. No, this is not going to happen. Yeah, like, yeah, I just took yeah. one shot. It's like going to see the Mona Lisa or something, right? You, your feet are not allowed to stop or something. So. Yeah, and so the, the big work actually took place this uh, this week and last week was to decide what do we keep, what do we take out, right? And for me, in my mind, I knew that... I always wanted to have the the pine trees with um, with the a very distinct shape yeah. because that would allow you to to identify. Uh, and then I okay. knew I wanted the people because that's oh, the main see, see. topic. Okay. So you've composed this. You've used yeah. elements from your photograph, elements yeah. from reality, and, and I wanted them. the glow okay. of the okay. lanterns in the rain, but. One thing we've decided is we take away the very identifiable spot of this one particular stone lantern because... Ah, oh, you lost it. You couldn't put everything in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. and right, it's But just, just to pause you, you said something there in a minute, just a second. You said, I want to show the glow of these lanterns. Yeah. And the reason I stopped, I want to ask more about this, because this really overlaps with our work. This lady is starting with a piece of paper, and the only thing that's going to happen is black. You are putting black onto this mm -hmm. paper. And you said, now, I want to show the glow of this lantern. Yeah. Explain. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't, no, no, really, I mean, I'm being serious. You can't paint a black glow. No, so, so you use negative space. Bingo. Which is basically, whatever you see as white on that scroll, in fact, let me just um, take... The point of time is, she doesn't paint white. Never. You don't have white pigment, right? You no, never use white. No, I don't white. use gofoam. You can it, use gofoam, mm, but the white pigment, what we're looking but at I, don't, here. Yes. I don't use it so, in general. So, so let me just... So here, um, basically, that's not painted at all. So you paint around. They're not seeing your cursor. They can't see them. So you're going to have to explain it by words. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> they can't uh, see your cursor. Yeah, it's not a... <laughs> no, it's not a, it's <laughs> it's not not a, a PowerPoint pointer. presentation. I'm sorry. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, dear. So <laughs> typically, we're, so in the bottom right of the painting, you see the lantern. Okay, wait, but one thing, yeah. you can't... Do the cursor but in a few minutes she is going to show us an actual painting and you can put your hand here and you can you work with your yeah, finger and there i will be able to so show. should we maybe say that explanation then when you've got your finger on the painting yeah, here in I'm a few thinking, minutes yeah, yeah is it okay rain yeah. check for 10 15 minutes yes that would be cool so let's look a little bit but you can see i took the main elements and then yeah like the decision is which where do you apply the deepest black and then where do you apply lighter gradations? Mm -hmm. and where do you keep mm -hmm. unpainted or just negative space? But there's no correcting. Once some black pigment has gone on that thing, that's there, right? There's no erasure. There's no covering no. up. You know. No. I mean, well. again, that's... What do you mean, well? <laughs> start again, start again. I mean, the sheet goes on the floor and you start, start again. Start again, start again, but... Um, Why are you hesitating? Uh, 
because if you've done something which is very light ink wash and you could potentially consider using a darker color in that spot oh, and that light dark, then becomes the yeah what was dark then, a moment ago it becomes can, a lighter version okay then, gotcha, gotcha, then gotcha. you can you can still paint over it yes, so it's not a correction yes but, yes yes you know, yes 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 you can make some very minor yep, yep, adjustments okay, okay, okay. but once Usually, the the most dangerous of all is really the pure black. Mm, Once mm, you've used mm, pure, pure mm, black, there's mm, nothing mm. that will cover it's it. It's funny because what you're saying now reminds me. There's a phrase in Hiroshi Yoshida's printmaking book. There's mm -hmm. nothing to do with your world at all. He's talking about printmaking, traditional Japanese printmaking, but which has the same thing. If we want to show bright white, we leave the paper, and the more black we put around it, the brighter that white exactly. gets. So the same thing is what you guys do. But Hiroshi Yoshi talks about this thing about adding layers, adding layers to bring this thing to life and adding layers and adding layers and it just doesn't work. You can't make it and adding layers. And they said, you know what, turn this into a night scene. And you put some big black thing all around it, just leave a few highlights and it works. It became a night scene. So let me look at what you've done here. Oh, that's a night scene. <laughs> Planned from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> it was planned from the beginning. That was actually the, the difficult part, but um, because you had to use a lot of negative space, which mm. is like, oh, mm. the lantern, negative mm. space. Mm. And then it's like, mm. oh, the white umbrellas, bit of negative mm. space yeah, there okay. too. Yeah, yeah. And then the light jacket, oh, more. So this is a challenge. The one you've shown us here, actually, this is not like beginner's work at all. There's a lot of experience no. showing here. Yeah. yeah. Not something like you would ask Koyashi a sensei said, do. you brought a fun challenge <laughs> this year. Very polite. <laughs> <laughs> difficult <laughs> challenge. Okay, the other thing you're what you're showing us here actually is sort of, there is, I guess, is that the work that's going yeah, to go to your exhibition go. next year? Yeah. Is it polite to ask you this or is it okay? And then push me away if this is not right. How many, like what, is this the 100th version? You know what I mean? And again, I'm not insulting you at all, I'm saying, I have, or you do preparatory sketches to see how the umbrella might work and, you know, sketch yeah. and sketch and sketch so, and that's okay. So for example, yes, and no, so I only had one scroll, empty scroll, and I painted directly on that. So if I had messed up this scroll, it would have gone in the bin and I would have had to start from scratch. Um, but we worked on each element separately. Um, on separate sheets of paper? On separate practice. sheets yeah, 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 okay. of paper. So how to do these... Uh, how to do this uh, winter construction of the pine trees, mm. the, the winter a little mm. cones. Mm. Okay, and, the element, and, the with, and with night rain, yes, I yes, yes. practiced that for maybe two, three days, just back, mm. not even mm. in class mm. but anymore, mm. but back in mm. my hotel mm. room, mm. <laughs> I okay. was doing okay. exercises okay. to figure out, the, to get the level of technique to... Okay, so you've studied and sketched different parts of this. I mean, yeah. the same, we, we the same can, with the people. Yeah, yeah, or any, any painter doing a massive canvas doesn't yeah. start with a massive thing. Of course, you just get yeah. your ideas and away you go. Because, okay, okay. because since uh, the original one, I had done like a full painting as well back then, just to test textures and ways of mm. doing things. Mm. Mm. And um, But then you need to simplify. Usually your first trial is always too complicated, and then it's about like mm. taking okay, things okay, out. Okay. But um, So you've worked on this composition. Yeah for quite a time, yeah. you know, bit elements first, then putting together, okay. But yeah. one thing you did say confused me a sec. You said you're painting on the scroll. I thought you made paintings and then when you had your finished one selected, you had it mounted as a scroll yeah. after the work was done. But you said now you're painting on the scroll. <laughs> so traditionally it would be that way and I also paint that way. Um, but in this case for the exhibition, sometimes for the standard, for the sizes to be a bit more standard. Um, oh, they give you the scroll the, in advance. They give you the scroll in advance and it's kind, it's, it's an oh, empty oh, 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 mounted oh. and you paint. So it's one and done. Yes, but also, um, it's funny that it was something that uh, Sensei told me for the first time. He finds that when people um, have this ready-made scroll in front of them and mm. they know they cannot mess mm. up, it mm. tends to bring the best work in people. Assuming you've done the practice. Yeah, well, yeah. accountability. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I could get this. I understand the word. And it gets a word. little bit cheaper too. I mean, it's, 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 yeah. it's live programming as opposed to pre-recording something, right? Yeah. If, if this had been a pre-recorded program, yeah. people are laughing at this now, we can take it easy because you know yeah. we, it doesn't make any difference. But yeah. once it's, you know, <clears throat> live where we go, I mean, I'm laughing at this because this yeah. is not such a serious thing, but if it was a serious thing, so I get it, I get it. I'm just not sure if I could jump to the conclusion that that would tend to bring out the best work. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know. I have to trust that he's uh, had well, enough. Okay, but what do you feel? Students. What do you feel? I think yes. Sometimes yes, because you 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 feel I have to practice. I have to bring it. Um, on the and at the same time, this this paper um, this paper is very difficult to get good contrast of color, the gradation from the pure black to the white, because it has a tiny tiny bit of sizing on it. So the it from does, being mounted, you mean? Yeah. Okay. So. Um, so it doesn't blur as easily. Oh, okay. There's not as much okay. Nijini. So there's different techniques involved with something that's already been mounted yeah. as opposed so to a raw sheet every time you change paper, okay. it's like you okay. have to okay. adjust okay. how okay. you load okay. the brushes all over again. It's a whole so this is, there's only one way around that, and that's experience. You've yeah, exactly. And so okay. typically, so yeah, typically when you're working with that, you're always very careful with your brush. And so it depends on your personality mm, if you're mm, kind of mm. oh i'm afraid i'm going to ruin Daredevil this whole thing or, yeah, it yeah. doesn't bring out your best work <coughs> because your yep, be your brush your hand yep, your careful. hand shows that yep, yep, that's yep. the, interesting, the wonderful interesting. and terrible thing about ink painting it's whatever your mm. mental attitude and mm. Mm. like your state of mind is it shows yep. in every brush yep. stroke yep. the is, maybe the closest analogy would be it's it's this is singing as opposed to playing an instrument like a piano where you're manipulating mechanical objects to make an effect or you're just sitting there and your raw naked body is yeah you can't hide there's nothing to hide no. and it's the simplest and yet most ultimately expressive thing on there as well so i guess that so painting you're doing is perhaps the closest thing visually to singing yeah, it's, expressing it, yourself this it's a way, very you know. kind of personal i think expression mm, and mm, yeah mm, but i think that's mm. also what's very nice about it is that if it helps you to get in a very quiet and peaceful state of mind which is why so many people you mentioned zen earlier it, so this yeah. is where that comes in is it and that's something that came to this in japan rather than on its from its chinese roots is that the idea there yeah i think so well, you mentioned that right at the beginning one of the first yeah. things you mentioned was the zen yeah, it, it came to Japan around the same time yeah. and through the same route. Yeah. Yeah. Let me look. There's some questions here. I should shut up a bit. Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> trying to trying to get you to. Uh, it says. Uh, it says my Instagram page is not available. That should be maybe an Instagram problem. I haven't taken anything down. And then Happy Yukes, what made you start ink painting in the first place? That's a um, very very good question. Um, in fact, the first time I came to Japan, I came because I had read a book about Japanese art history. So I love art history. I used to um, kind of self-taught, used to read a lot of books and I took a night class as well for about a year. But if you learn art history in Europe, it's all Western centric. <laughs> <laughs> is this, you mean now or back when you were back, learning? Back, mean, uh, well, yeah, not, back, not trying to age about you, 20 sorry. years ago. Okay, okay. Um, and, um, but at some point I came across a Japanese art history book, just a very small uh, Thames and Hudson book, and, um, and I just flipped through it and I said, I have to read this, I have to, to have this book. It didn't make sense then, I was supposed to be reading something about like Italian Renaissance, like if you had followed the European logic of chronology. But it just but were you to already, me. But were you already painting at this point? No, no, Nothing no, not at all. Okay. So I was attracted to the art and I decided to come to Japan because I wanted to see the country that made this type of art. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then the years went by and I said I want to go to Japan again. And then at some point when I started learning the language, um, I came across an ink painting class. And, and so I was like, oh, you Here can start... Japan. No, in Switzerland, Switzerland actually. And I said, oh, I can learn this from Europe. <laughs> in my mind, I had never mm. thought that this was actually a type of art that you could learn outside of Japan. Or, um, and so I just went to one class and, and I never looked back. I just went again and again and then at some point okay, I started practicing Just to pause you there for a second. Then. So you're not coming at this as a person who was already involved in drawing and painting no. and thinking, I'm the kind of person who makes pictures like that. You came through first just as a general interest in Japan. Yes, in Japanese art. <laughs> yeah, really, really. And again, the reason I mentioned this... And it just went deeper and deeper. Yes, yes, yes. Because that overlaps with me a little bit. Half the world now looks at me, Dave, the artist. People come in here to the shop. Dave, I love your pictures, love your art. You know, wonderful, wonderful. And like, I don't actually do this at all. I'm not an artist. But it's the same thing. I, the interest first was in Japanese culture or something yeah. general. And then came this way. So it's an interesting... 
but I would have thought of you as a person who wanted to draw or did draw and then put down the Western brush and picked up a Japanese brush. Not at all. Interesting. The first so brush I ever picked up was, was the Japanese one. Japanese so there's nothing so there's brush. nothing to unlearn then. That's an interesting point, no. you know, I think. When you came at that with your first teachers then, they may be frustrated like trying to get people to unlearn what they know about Bob Ross painting or something or whatever <laughs> whatever it was, you know. But you're a blank canvas for them. Yep. A left-handed blank canvas. <laughs> left -handed, but left oh my God! Oh my God! But blank oh canvas, nevertheless. <laughs> okay, well, that's the next question. Those first teachers are the people, or your teacher now, Kobayasa. Does he like? He just when he realizes again, oh, here she is. Here's the lefty. Does he roll his eyes or? No, no, I don't think so. Not at all. I think uh, in, he sees that for the first time. He <laughs> gave me a poem on the painting that I brought, and because he. I told him this time we speak only Japanese. Uh, my Japanese is now intermediate okay. level, so it's okay. like, it okay. should be good enough that however basic you can still mm. understand mm. me. Mm. And uh, should yeah. be. But then he didn't give me an excuse. He says, well, if you if you <laughs> speak a bit of Japanese, you do the whole calligraphy. And I'm like, this is an old oh, poem. Oh, in other words, I don't if you're going to jump in the do. pool, you're going to jump in the deep end, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, like, just. just Oh, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, but wait a minute, wait a minute, okay, let's pause that and, again. And, and okay. they're not like block just script, minute, he just gave minute, me just cursive minute. stuff. You've got a picture there, is it a picture stuff, whatever. You've got Kobayashi yeah. Sensei yeah. in your picture, whatever. Yeah. And that okay. kind of stuff to me, it's composed sort of top to bottom and down we go when the brush moves down the paper, whatever. Yeah. But what about the horizontal stuff? Because the way I understood this, correct me where I'm, where I'm misunderstanding this, you get a scroll painting, it's yeah. meant to be rolled up and opened as a Japanese book is from the right hand yeah. side. So when you see this landscape on a scroll painting, we see uh, the travelers setting out on their journey and yeah. moving to from the right to the left. Yeah. That Just, should be possible too. Yes, because that's what I was going to say. For the right handed person using a brush, a static image, top to bottom, left yeah. to right, the strokes work. But a scroll moving that way, that's against now the natural movement of a right-handed person. And I can imagine a left-handed brush painter, as you go on this landscape, move, you, see what, you see what I'm getting yeah, at, right? Yeah. It's the natural movement. Yeah, but f I actually thought it would be easier to do it the way in that way too. But uh, the landscape he gave me as an exercise, uh, let me pull this one down, Kanazawa, oh, it's been gone for too long. They don't actually see any of your tracing sorry, right sorry. now. Okay, okay. Let me take this, no, this one, this one. What, you mean people can't see my masterwork here? Yeah. Okay. Uh, exactly. Okay. That's for your actual work, not just my stuff. Um, okay, what's what's the timing on this? What time is it now? Is it? It's uh, eight thirty-seven. Okay, let's think about the planning here. We do have a show and tell today here that actually is related to Mafalda's work. We have a bit of a semi surprise here. Uh, that's so that's show and tell time. But I also want you brought some some pictures to show. Yep. So what should we do here? Should we save everything for the end of show and tell time, or should we take a little break now? I'm mean, not really doing anything useful anyway. Should we put a couple of your paintings on on the pa on the page here? Um, maybe let's answer maybe or if you've got more questions are stacking up okay okay questions. all right then you take care of those for a minute yeah let's take care of those um so yep uh, so karen have to disagree that every woodblock print starts with a line drawing the hokusai editions do but not all woodblock prints so that's oh okay that's we were interesting is, is that something uh, i said I um oh May bottom fog donkey maybe so no, no there are no silly questions bottom left looks like a square mark for your name signature like on the woodblock print artist is this a standard japanese format for signing artwork it is um so that seal was carved for me by my sensei and he actually picked the kanji but it's not um it's not, um, so it's, it is like a, a goal, like a, an artist name, but it's actually just a phonetic version of my name, Maharuda, with four different kind, kanji, Chinese characters. Gives him a robot. This is a piece of stone it's that's going to, it's going to be impressed in red pigment onto yeah. the thing. Okay, okay. Onto the thing. And, um, and yeah, and the kanji, they, they relate actually to ink painting. The first one you picked, so the, um, 
is actually to grind or to polish <laughs> but the, because that's what that's what you actually do every time you when you prepare mm -hmm. you prepare your ink and you start mm -hmm. by grinding mm -hmm. it on the stone so and the references to the actual work itself you're a grindstone you're, you're, you're grinding. Really? yeah so it's not a very auspicious <coughs> they don't have very auspicious meaning the, my name my current name um, it's yeah, it's phonetically it's the same as my first name, but uh, they actually all relate to being a hardworking painter. <laughs> I think that the word that uh, uh, when I brought my seal again to sign the work uh, this time, Kobayashi Sensei looked at it and said, "I was a bit kibishi this year." <laughs> <laughs> so he would choose something else if he were doing this again. He was a but bit wait, 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 Mafalda, that's totally okay, right? You're going to use that seal now for for X years here to do this. Yeah. Then, whether it's the same teacher here, Kobayashi or not, he will say at some point, "You know what? It's time for a name change." I mean, we know how this works. I mean, I'm not even being sarcastic here, right? And as through your through your your career life as doing this. It's totally acceptable. I think in the, uh, yes, in the traditional world, yes. I mean, I have no idea what, mm. uh, when those names okay, change. But you're taking it, yes, like yes, a, yes, 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 yes. So I'm just taking it as it comes. Mm. But, um, but you see but my point, this funny. is actually a thing. If at yeah. some point you know, over the, your, your career in this, that that name really became, look, that, that was fine back then, but it's not who you are now, yeah. then it's totally acceptable to let's... You yeah, so the people know. who are studying under him and who've become teachers themselves, mm -hmm. uh, for example, they usually have one of the mm. kanji borrowed from his yes. name, exactly like in wood, in wood block, block yes, printing. Yes, so yes, that's yes, the same. Yes. It's the same. Toyokuni uh, teaches Kuni Yoshi, who teaches yeah. Yoshitoshi, and down it goes. Exactly. It goes, yeah, so, so, in, so some people would take the to, or some people mm. would take the fun mm. um, mm. from his name. But these names, I guess, uh, in uh, my understanding of it, they are really pretty much always at the pleasure or whim of the teacher. You don't choose yeah. this stuff yourself at yeah. all. You are given these things and whether you like it or not. And you're like, you're paying. I mean, you, you are, you know, paying <laughs> substantial uh, you know, fees to the, to, to the teacher, of course. Yes. This person is obviously not Class. cheap. You know, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so Can I ask, nice. and I, if you think it's something I shouldn't ask, just blow me aside here. Because you're living over there and he's living here, you're not seeing him regularly. Many of his students may, may come for, what, a monthly session or something yeah. once a month. You're obviously on a more uh, no, appointment-only kind of basis. So, so is that how you're, you pay him as well for each visit? or? Um, so I would actually just pay him the same as any of his students. I pay him for each lesson. And, um, and because I come and I can only come once a year, then I try to take more lessons. So oh, I see, I see, I, I would, see. I would not be paying him every <coughs> month, but I would be paying him the oh, okay. equivalent of for however many okay. lessons. So even I'm his regular paid. students, they're not paying a gesha, a monthly fee, they're paying a per session a fee, per session are they? Okay, fee, okay, okay, yes. okay. So, so it's no difference for you then, just their no. sessions are farther spread apart? Okay, okay. So, um, yeah. okay. so it's very similar. And is he, like, is there a... Back when I lived in, in Hamara, one of my earliest patrons for the poet series was an art collector. He was a businessman, not done money, 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 but he also took me upstairs to his little private gallery. He collected Nihonga paintings. And I was new in Japan, and it was one of his jobs to bring David into the knowledge of the Japanese culture, whatever. And he used to explain to me the Nihonga paintings he had on the wall. And he would say, that one cost on a sum per go. And I'm like, wait a minute, whatever. So, and the cost, th th these painters who were doing the Nihonga paintings, there was a master Bible published by these various art associations. Yeah. And all the painters were listed in there, and their current price was in there. Mm -hmm. And each one of these painters, these were active people, not mm -hmm. historical, mm -hmm. their current price was based on how much their paintings cost per postcard size piece. I think yeah. it was called a go, ichigo, nigo, sango, yongo. I don't remember okay. the exact terminology. And if, you, if your price was a thousand yen per go, and you did a canvas that size, the gallery dealer mentioned it, and that's what you got paid for. That was your, your painting. It was priced this way. So it was your personal ranking, the painter's personal ranking in this guidebook published by the association, and then X, Y, based on the size and dimensions. Mm -hmm. Now, Kobayashi Sensei must be a part of one of these art associations in the, in the Japanese art world here. And I imagine... That the book is there and his name is in there and 10 years ago he was there and now he's maybe here and... and I, 
don't, you don't know? know. Okay, so you don't follow that part I of this. I don't yeah. follow yeah. 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 that part enough, I think, to mm. understand. I know there is a, an association at a Japanese level only, and there's one international association mm. which he actually chairs. Mm. Mm. Um, but I'm not sure if it's as structured, if it's as crystallized mm. as this mm. Nihonga. Mm. So, I mean, there in, in all, I think, in, in many fields of art, I think there is. You always try to keep some consistency between size and and pricing of the work, right? But uh, but I don't think anyone actually has like mm. a square. Mm. No, <laughs> yeah, but, like a well, price what I'm describing is what was told to me. This was in like the late so 1980s, at the end of the yeah. bubble era. And he pulled this book out. It was like it was the the blue book it's for whatever you know. And they were there, and he showed me how it worked, and each, each person's number was there. And he pulled out last year's book and showed me his favorite artist was moving up in ranking yeah. and stuff like yeah. this. But the fact that I haven't seen it doesn't mean that it no, doesn't no, no, exist No, 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 of course, of course, of course. Right? No, 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 no. So it just seems to me that's for the Nihonga world almost certain. I think the same thing would, would do. You know? yeah. And he said it, 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 everybody knows now. Everybody knows where they are. There's no wheeling and dealing. When you go to buy a painting in the gallery, the price is there. You look at the book for the price, and there it is. Okay. And the wheeling dealing happens, I guess, when they publish next year's book, who is up, who is down, down. the numbers. So that, that's where the wheeling and dealing happens. But it meant the customers know what they've got. They know what the value is. When the new book gets published, they all buy it so they can look at their collection. And they've got the new value for their collection. And he said it, it avoids hostility. It avoids, you know, yeah. like there's no, you go to any shop in Japan to buy something. There's no bargaining. Yeah. And what's something worth in a major gallery? And he said, this does the same thing. There's no bargaining. Don't even need to put the price on. Everybody knows what yeah. these things are worth, and in your, maybe this is also happening in your world or not. I don't know. So. Yeah, I don't mm. know to that extent. Mm. To be honest, mm. maybe mm. if I were living in Japan, maybe I would uh, become more aware. To be mm. honest, of mm. that. Mm. So, um, but I think I think you always kind of um, like I've sold uh, some of my works, uh, of course, as well, and. I think you always just try to benchmark a little bit what other ink painters are and yes, what their level is and um, mm -hmm. of uh, Well, I presume too at the moment, there's no, for you, there isn't much of a commercial interest in this. I guess, I mean, obviously what I'm reading from a fault here is you're just trying to learn how to do this as satisfactorily and as beautifully as possible, you know? Yes, I think for me it's it's not to to become like mm -hmm. <laughs> the, my primary mm -hmm. income stream. It's mm -hmm. really to, are you selling to become the best artist. Are you selling works? Uh, I do sell okay, works, okay, and um, yeah, I I just uh, am kind of hoarding a few of them. Like for example, the Kanazawa Eight View. Some mm, people ask mm, me, mm, will I sell mm. some of those scrolls? And uh, for example, I will, but I will only when the series is complete. Mm -hmm. uh, and will that be back in Switzerland, or will that be here in Japan? Uh, and do you need Sensei's approval to do this? Again, uh, I, I, please kick me back no, if some of these questions I, I are not right. I don't think so. No, if I want to sell some of my works, mm. I don't need. Um, anyone's approval. Mm, I think okay, um, okay. usually the, the teachers, um, also my teacher back in Switzerland, they're very uh, positive about their students selling their works okay. because I think they want to So you're not part to, of his studio in that sense, you know, you can't sell something until he approves of it. It's not that case no, at all. Okay. all right, okay. No. no, so it's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's not like I think, I guess that kind of more reminds me of the, the very old days of like when you had like Kano school. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. <laughs> but, um, but I also remember one, and this, this I vividly remember because it affects me so strongly. It's in my first maybe five, six, seven years in Japan, a reporter had come from the Japan Times to talk yeah. to me and my own work and stuff. And he was uh, learning how to play a biwa, you know, yeah. the Japanese traditional okay. lute. And he was going to a biwa teacher for this and had been for you know, three, four, five years or something, a, a long time at that time. And he had been talking about me, and I was holding a gallery show of my work or something. He said, well, did you get permission for that? I'm saying, well, I rented a gallery, you know, yeah. nothing. He said, geez, you're so lucky. Just do what you want, right? And I was like, I didn't understand. Like, why is he saying this? And yeah, he, exactly. then he told me about his own. He was taking this Biba lessons, and he'd been doing so for years. He had not yet been allowed to go on stage. You know, the, the, the school, the Biba yeah. type school, had its, its recitals X times a mm -hmm. year. And the sensei had not yet tabbed him for being back row member of the chorus yet, thinking this guy wasn't ready for this. And this young man had not had any chance and was not permitted to even think about playing in public until the okay. teacher said, you're in the next, you're in the March concert. And, you know, 
pay up your lesson, you pay up your concert stage fee, and away we go. There, no, I did a small solo exhibition about two years ago, just a couple of days in Zurich, and um, and during that I actually had a small workshop just to show people mm. with a brush pens how mm. you would paint mm. uh, one topic, very very short, for fun and mm. um, and so you're both a free my teachers here. were actually yeah. quite okay. excited. Good. Because okay, no, I'm they, happy to hear this. Of course, they're they're very. They're more of the opinion that the art should carry on for as long as possible and shouldn't okay. die out. Right. So common um, sense is at work here. You know, yeah, so so but, but then having said that, are there places where you could be studying this brush painting with a really strict teacher who would be like that? You know, you're not going to public yet. I don't yeah, think yeah. you're ready. So that does exist or? Okay. I think I've been very lucky with, with the teachers that I've had and I... I don't. <laughs> mm, yeah. I haven't gone shopping, shopping yeah, around. No, 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 of course, of course, course, course. Teachers, yeah. so yeah, no, I wasn't being sarcastic so about it. Just, just uh, honestly no, no, curious. No, no, I, I don't. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I think so. that thing the young man I was talking to would be, but it's on stage performing arts, you know, Japanese traditional dance, things like this. Yeah. Biwa. Another lady I know, she has been studying, you know, fue, the fue, the fue, and same thing. And the the, the teacher determined everything. Yeah. when she could go on stage, what she could play, what kind of dress she yeah. had to wear, all this kind of stuff. It was extremely strict. Yeah. I think it's um, yeah, it's probably very much stricter, but it's probably that that teacher is also the one who is uh, being the one contacted to, to do the performance. Ah, yes. So, and so, probably the responsibility And when is, you are ready, that will be your bridge. Yes, yes. Yeah. Probably. So, so that would be probably yeah. a bit the yeah. difference, right? Okay. So, mm. But um, so people are asking, did you learn to use Suroban and have you found it useful? I think this is a question for you. No, is it? Sorry. I don't think that would be a question for me. Is it for me, Suroban? Suroban, abacus. Oh, no. I haven't. Have you? No. Nope. So, no. Nope. Next question. <laughs> Next question. Moving on. Sorry. <laughs> what is Dave working on today? Uh, not much. He's supposed to be trained. Sorry. We haven't got anywhere. Am I visible here? I don't have a yes, clue. Yeah. Um, my back is now so tight against the wall. God, whatever. This is the Hokusai print that will be published on July the 1st. The first shipments. I'm still okay, actually. I'm still okay. This is, where are we now? We're May, May the 20th. These have to be, the first ones have to be shipped July the 1st. And I'm going to make it. I'll make it. I'll make it. I would have traced all of that for you, but in analog. <laughs> Take the brush. Um, so people are asking questions about the art world. Do you sell art? Like, don't people sell art at auctions or art fairs? Um, so there's, the art world is really split between a primary market and a secondary market. So auction is a secondary market. Usually the artist, well, very often doesn't get anything out of the auction, although this is also um, not always the case. Um, some works do still pay a fee whenever they're traded back to the artist. Um, but um, but typically only very well-known artists or artists who have passed away will be f showing up in a secondary market, in auction. Um, We're talking painting, ink paintings here still? Yes, okay. ink paintings in general. Um, I think the primary market would include fairs or would include like uh, galleries, but would also include like self-organized shows. So I think it, um, typically like every artist if you have a number of years body of work then at some point maybe you do get picked up by a gallery but um, um, right now um, I'm still organizing every now and then um, my own events or taking part in collective exhibitions um, there's nothing in a secondary market as far as I know Everybody that has bought some of my work still is happily mm. owner. Mm. A little bit, a little bit <laughs> they, premature to call this way. They haven't lived long enough so, so. That, they, <laughs> that they're already kind of showing okay. up. All right, but then years. To, to push the same question a bit farther, would that be the goal for you? You're obviously very young. You're really interested in this. You're obviously going to be developing as time goes yeah. by. Is it sort of the goal to, be, to become a recognized practitioner of this as being, if there was one of those, you know, the blue books I mentioned, to be included in this sort of system, to be I mean, a gallery artist? I mean, of course I would artist? love to get to, to that stage mm -hmm. from, from, just from the perspective that I feel that I've mastered the art enough and that, uh, that my work is, you know, not just beautiful and reproducing mm -hmm. what's already existing, but has mm -hmm. its own style <coughs> and... Uh, 
okay, its then own kind of unique. Okay, the obvious next question or two is, okay, you're, you're a quote-unquote foreigner here, obviously. Yeah. You know, there are people in this world here in Japan doing ink paintings. Most of them, I presume, will be Japanese. Like, take, take the example of sumo or something, whatever. At one point, the sumo world was just Japanese. The idea yeah. that a foreigner would do it was just inconceivable to anybody. Okay, now in the world, here you are, you're a foreigner who is parachuting and is doing this. Is this uh, okay? Is this, are you to get resistance on this? There are people who don't care? Or there's enough international mixing now that it's all, all blown up? Um, um, I think... I mean, you're in the show. Last year you said you came to do a show, so you're yeah. obviously accepted into this show. Yes, exactly. Were there I many, think this were is there very international. Forms? There are many international, and there are like an, a, a mm. number of countries, uh, like small schools. Mm. So it, it is very accepted um, to have international people. I think in a commercial, um, what can I say? I think in, if you go to a commercial gallery world, maybe I'm going to say the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure, you know, uh, people. Don't <laughs> no, just, don't quote me on this, we, we just, but I I do have a feeling that when people see this kind of <coughs> art, they expect to see a Japanese name or um, behind the art. Um, You're saying the consumers here the in consumers, Japan. The okay. consumers, the consumers, I think, would be more looking for that. The um, consumers in Japan or consumers internationally? I think internationally. I think really, they still want to see Japanese. Names. I, th I think they, in general, I think they would expect to see that it's a, a Japanese okay. person. So in that sense, then you have a higher hill to climb than a native Japanese. Then. But maybe that's just my perception. As mm. I said, mm. don't quote me on no, this. No, we're just it's discussion. It's just a discussion. Um, Probably because, like me, when you first see this type of art, you just assume it's not taught to mm. anyone mm. outside mm. of Japan. Mm. It's so mm. niche and so... Um, mm. and something you intrinsically... There's a related point the then. Back in 19... it would be in 1989. I, don't know, I was just starting out on my 100 Port series. I had set yeah. it up as a subscription thing, so I wasn't interested in becoming a gallery artist or anything like that. But one of the TV crews that had come to me was trying to make a background story. And without me, my Japanese was so bad, without me really understanding what they were doing, they made this little script and they sent me downtown to knock on a couple of gallery doors to see if these galleries would want to take my work. And at that time, I was too weak, I didn't have enough confidence, I wasn't sure what I was doing, so I just sort of basically followed instructions. If that happened now, I would tell them to just run and jump, we don't do that. But anyway, this is 1989. And I went into one gallery, it's called the Tolman Collection in uh, Shibu Daima, near Tokyo Tower. Mm. And we spoke English with them, and, uh, and the guy blew me away. He said, no, no, we don't want any more foreigners. We don't want to become a gaijin ghetto, a gaijin gallery. Yeah. And he, the artists that he wanted and wanted to represent, he wanted, and again, this is 1989, generations ago, he wanted Japanese artists in his thing. So just, I wonder if that's relevant to the, to the example you've just mentioned. It's you know? probably a little bit. Well, Korangami is actually echoing a bit. He says he once showed his origami photographs to a local art gallery, and the gallerist told him that it would be better if a Japanese artist made them. Wait, wait, local meaning Germany. He's in, he's I in guess Europe. Germany, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I, I would guess. I see. So because it was a Japanese, they wanted to avoid cultural appropriations. They wanted, you, have to be, you have to have the name Suzuki in order to do origami. <laughs> I don't okay. know. Yes, so Korigama said yes in Germany. So, and hi, Andy the artist. She's saying that it will be her last stream that she'll be joining for a while. So, hi. <laughs> um, mm, yeah. mm. So, um, See, I get nearly no blowback like that at all. You know, the number of people, I mean, basically I get nothing. Yeah. Why are you doing this? You're, you're, you should be a Japanese person. I get next to nothing. I, I, I've like never this. got asked a question like um, like in the in the negative sense of why you're doing mm, this, mm, right? Usually mm, the question is, mm. you know, how did you get started? Mm, because mm. it just seems People are interested usual. in what's going yes, on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, more yeah, of an yeah, interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, but yes, I think on the commercial side, I think that some people will think that it's it's easier to... I think it's, it's again, awareness and perception, mm, like all things. Mm, mm. Um, so we are coming on to nine. So you want to show some pictures? Okay, so okay, okay. Yep. No, no, you're, you're the boss here. I, I don't see the time, and I don't see. I don't know if uh, I've anything. missed. Have I missed any important questions in the chat? Please tell me okay. if I have. I'm trying to keep up. Trying to do a better job than last so right, time. Uh, last time? What do you mean? <laughs> what you have when a I sense was last year, I think I missed so many questions in the chat. I always miss questions. What do you mean? They know we miss questions. That we can't. They keep track. <laughs> Okay, what have so, we got? We have a horizontal yes. scroll screen.
scroll, no, it's not a scroll at this point. It's a horizontal ink painting. So we have horizontal ink painting. Should we <coughs> do one? I think we should. These are small, long? What? Yes. Are we so going to see the whole thing or we're going to roll piece by piece by piece let's by piece? Let's roll it maybe piece by piece. Okay, well, so let's start because I can't tell where we are. Let's just so see. That's the beginning. Is exactly. that where I need to hold that's it? That's the beginning. Yep. Okay. Maybe. Should we. Are we okay then? Do we have to. Make, okay, just go like this? Okay, so I, I need to start so. here. Do All we right. need to shrink anything? I think that's. You think tell that's me now. Okay, it's up to you. So, you. You tell them so what the we're seeing and you tell me we, what to do. The painting that we saw in the photo, the Kanazawa in the winter. That's what I would call an original. So the idea was by Mafalda, and uh, the photography was by Mafalda, and then she wanted to convert that into an ink painting. This would be a reproduction. So this I just joined this month's class, and since they said this is the landscape. So what he, he puts the, it up on the, on the it's wall. up on the wall, and he then um, because uh, I did not take the class at the same time as his students, he mm. demonstrated it for me again. Okay. Um, and um, he actually reversed it for me because I was left-handed. <laughs> Although I have a feeling it would have been easier. Reversed it? Really? Look, look, look. He mirrored it. The, the original he painted for his students, these trees. We're on the other side. On the other <laughs> side. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so, so we started. And, um, and so what you'll see is, um, if we go through the scroll, it's interesting because it will show you how you think of using the ink um, in the different layers of depth. Okay, we've got so your most close up close subject, the one that is in the foreground, are the trees. So this is where potentially you are um, as a spectator. And so that uses pure, pure sumi black. Yeah. And a lot of this technique, for example, the pine needles, you would recognize the word. It would also be called kasure, which is the dry... Um, dry scratch brushing. This show. dry, yeah. exactly. And so you start with that. Okay, Manfred, can I pause you yeah. just one second? So you. You, this you said you're making a reproduction. So the teacher did a master copy here. Yeah. And you're no. So that means you're going to put like you're going to put a tree in the same place he did a tree. You're yeah. going to put a smaller tree exactly. in the same place. But are you going to like do every branch the way he's done it? Every no. dot, every leaf. So no, I use the same technique. About... So I look at when he did his uh, quick demonstration. I pay attention to how he does the the brush strokes mm -hmm. and how he holds the brush to do um, to do the. Mm -hmm. The leaves right or mm. the needles mm. Mm. and then I just reproduce that technique but it's still my my trees so for mm. example it doesn't have exactly the same number of branches mm. and it won't it it will never look a hundred percent the same even if I were to try to replicate mm. we can't, exactly it's, it's, you can't yeah, of course, of course, because of it's how your muscles and mm. your but own that's my question hand. how much you said reproduction yeah. how much are yeah. we trying to like would, you, would yours have the same mountainy wash in the background that his does so it will always be slightly different but you would aim to have a similar stroke so then once I've done the trees the first part is to add those kind of uh, rocky hills um, where the trees kind of stand on and um, and those again were in the okay. original landscape too. Or right, again to try and get my head around this then so in other words the composition here has been decided he has yep. done a composition there will yep. be trees there would be mountains there will be there little would birds be in the, the sky thing, there would be the water so at this point you are not seeing. doing composition in your mind at all exactly so no. what you're doing now is Trying to replicate it as technical. best as I can, okay. technically. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So there's no, you're, you're, you've turned off your artist brain for the moment. Exactly. And you've turned on your your student studying the scales. You're the, yeah. you're the pianist doing scales and stuff. I'm trying to get a handle on what's happening here. Okay. Yeah. And so what happens is you just need to know the order as well in which you do things because some things have to be done while the paper is still wet. So, for example, this beautiful kind of craggy. Mm -hmm. stone that you see mm. you did something with a hake brush a far wider one right and you just painted that with a gradation wait 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 wait, 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 wait. sorry Kim, his yeah. picture is on the wall you don't you didn't see him you didn't know the order he did these things how do you know the order uh well because i know enough technique i already oh. kind of can guess how he did it but he did demonstrate it for me he can paint this in like 10 minutes, 10 to oh, So he minutes. did it while you were there? Yes, he did Soka, it for me quickly. Soka. So you're, you're watching him do this, trying yeah. to re record this in your brain, because yeah. you're going to do it yourself in a few minutes. Yeah. 
Okay, okay. Of course, okay, for me, okay, it then okay, takes okay, okay. me three hours, right? But okay, 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 okay. <laughs> that's okay. the difference. All right. All right. And, then, and, then, and then, but he's also, he's in the room while you're doing this now. So yes. he is actually chatting with you, talking to yeah. you. And, and so then okay. he comes okay. and he will also, like, he sees, oh, well, here it would be better if there were still maybe a few lines. So mm. he might actually pick up the brush mm. and do like a mm. few extra strokes just to show me that it would be nicer if mm. it had like a, a mm. more uh, mm. richer mm. black still to get more structure. So he will um, look up at the whole balance of the composition. To do this thing that we've just seen, how many different tools would have been involved? So then? in this case, you would have had a wide hake, but that would have been maybe, not this one, it would have been maybe this Is size. Okay. I don't know what. Well. Okay. Yeah, and that's be. for what? Things like the, these washes for, like this? Yes, that would be for things like the rock, the mountains, um, everything that you see mm. with a light mm. wash, mm. but that requires a, a big stroke. Um, mm. So the vague parts. The vague parts. Okay. And then um, I would use something that's more or less of this size for the pine trees that we saw at the beginning and the big black trees. And then once I'm doing something that's smaller, like, like this. also even the islands or maybe the the little water lines, mm. I would use a slightly smaller brush. Mm. For the boat... Um, this is actually not careful drawing. This is a fine okay. detail so we've got type a, brush. And this so is dipped in ink, and you're, yeah. now, you're now drawing yeah. carefully exactly. with this. Interesting, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So, um, yes. And so then you said the order. So uh, my guess here, those things like drawing that, that would be pretty much near the end of the process you're yes. putting in these. Yes, so the boat and the three little birds way in the yeah, distance, yeah, back at the so beginning, so those were the final, final elements. So. Okay, but just a minute, to put that boat in, the boat sails already there, so you prepped this boat earlier. Yes, so you could do it two ways, but yes, so I did it, the, the birds, gray birds, wash, birds. Oh, and I see, we had three birds. Okay, I get you, I get you, I get you. Yeah. yeah. Or you can do it both ways, but in this case, yes, it was the basic structure and then the line. Oh, okay, okay. And then the calligraphy in this case came at the very end, so which I don't think people can see. It's not a masterpiece. My first calligraphy poem. Lefty. 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 We're, I practiced that for right about We're right to left, top minutes. to bottom, but we're lefty. So Yeah, okay. you didn't mirror the calligraphy. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got my next that question there. Wait work. a minute, wait a minute, so wait a minute. So what was interesting... And this is the Mafalda seal we exactly, were talking about, is exactly, it? Exactly, yes. And okay, you're going to you're yeah. gonna have to take me through this. It's top... Is it yeah, one, so two, three, four to show? It's is exactly ma. This is ma. We know the ma. This is the utamaro no ma. The ma to show. Really? I have no idea. I don't recognize okay. all of them. It's so, ma. Yeah, and then ha. Ah, for the fa, ha. Yeah. Okay. And then ru. And, and da. da. Ma, ha, ru, ru da, da, ma, ha, yeah. ru, da. So, so, okay. so, and he has, he has, as you said, carefully yeah. chosen characters that have an, a meaning behind mm. Yes. And I mean, he and these are not like block script, right? So I, I, I couldn't even recognize what some of those kanji are. And he yeah, just yeah, said, oh, yeah, just reproduce yeah. this. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So I just did a few circles around a few of them. And like, wait a minute. actually show me how you would. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> Where do you start? You're you faking stop? this till you make it. Is that the idea? <laughs> <laughs> because, like, you know, uh, Kokoro, like, uh, the, the heart, these kanji I would know, even the yeah, water yeah, yeah. kanji I would have seen before. Okay, it doesn't, before. it's not actually as bad as it sounds, what here, because no matter how complex one of these characters is, kanji, Chinese characters, no matter how complex they are, they're still made up of recognizable smaller parts. So these are not just random chicken scratches no. that you're trying to remember. Even if she didn't know this particular character, she knows absolutely the components that have gone into it. Yeah. So yes, so lots of times we can actually see, or you could copy it and draw it without knowing what it says. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But for me, it helps to know what does the block script look like mm -hmm. because then I know mm -hmm. more or less no, of course, what of course, the original course, what radicals were. were there. Yeah, yeah and yeah. where are you supposed to start mm -hmm. because yeah. it, it always has a little bit the same logic of good fun. You know, a good top fun. to bottom. Good fun. Okay, so this was this was an exercise as we see yeah. a reproduction. But no, okay, jump ahead to that. If this was the real world, yeah. you've got your blank piece of paper with yeah. no model on top. Yeah. So you're doing composition and drawing at the same time. But would you have the composition worked out in advance? You've done your sketches of trees, you've done your sketch of a boat, you've got your pieces in mind, and then bang, you do, here you go. But exactly like in, well, it depends how complicated or if it's a, a composition that I've worked on many times before. So let's say I want to paint a landscape with 
the bamboo, right? I've painted bamboo as an element like mm. billion, mm. bazillion times. So I probably just straight off go and I don't have to think. Mm. Mm. But if I'm trying to do a landscape like the one I did for Kanazawa, or actually mm. it's a brand new idea, but it's actually a brand new topic that I've never mm. tried to do with ink painting before. There's a lot of pre-planning. Then, then, then there's case, a lot yeah. more pre-planning. Yeah. 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 But even in here, because you cannot control every stroke like 100%, you adapt as you go. It's going to go in directions that you may not have planned. Exactly. Yeah. And so yeah. Yeah. so sometimes you hmm. yeah, you will yeah, have fair, to adjust fair, um, fair. and the waterfall will So there's be a different. there's a jazz aspect to this. Yeah, exactly. No. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. No, I guess it's again, a bit I, I don't right? yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> I mean, to me, to, to someone to me who this is total Greek to me. This seems like total jazz, you know. You've, you've done your wood shedding, you've practiced your scales, you know your chord progressions, and then you stand up and you're just making this up as you Gordon go Gordon Kami has a very good question, which is, why are some kanji much bolder than others? That should all, almost win another chocolate egg, because um, that is a very good point, which I hadn't noticed, and uh, it was an instruction that was given to me. The poem is something about being in, um, uh, in the fourth hour and being looking at uh, the, um, looking at the flowers and the mountains and also the sound of running water. The fourth hour, time yes. of the day we're talking about, early yes. morning. Yes, but oh, I think that this has several phonetic readings okay. and so there are several different connotations. I didn't actually understand mm. all of them, to be fair. Mm. Um, and so he told me to accent four characters in the calligraphy and those are the characters for uh, the four. This is the tree mm -hmm. uh, kanji mm -hmm. this is one, one and, and heart. heart and so so the idea that you're looking at the trees and um in this uh landscape but i think the idea of probably being pure of heart and just a like a single mind oh. so i think um, but depending on the balance of the calligraphy okay, just a minute. you could choose to highlight maybe different characters okay but but wait a minute nicer. wait a minute okay to pause you on this exactly. uh, the idea here you've got an ink stone with water next to you here you've grind you've ground your ink and your brush is going into the ink ready 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 so you're not coming at this with a brush full of ink yeah. so you're going to start I'm, I'm upside down here but yeah. so your first character is the four your brush is full of ink it's yeah. going to be a strong one no matter what you're doing yeah. here yeah. and then the brush gradually bit by bit by bit yeah. runs out of ink and at some point you're thinking okay i got to cut and run here you go back to your ink stone recharge yeah. it so Dave, knowing nothing here, would think this person has started with a four, bit by bit it's run out, they've recharged here, wood, but then right away you get another strong one. Yeah. And it doesn't run out so much, so it's not just running out of ink here, you have specifically I've, decided to go back and I recharge. I decided to go back and if the character, and in some cases if the brush was still loaded too much, I could choose to wipe it a bit in some paper gotcha, to, gotcha, gotcha, to get gotcha, a more gotcha, interesting gotcha. Okay, okay. character. So this is not just the natural loading and running out of pigment. No, this in this is, case, no. This is calculated and it made to happen this way. Yeah. Okay, interesting. I had never yeah. ever heard that before. Okay, yeah. interesting. Thank in you. In this case, he asked me for that specifically. Interesting. Um, and I had also no, wasn't aware of that before. Mm. Mm. You artificially run it out or wipe it off in order yeah. to get the stronger characters to in get a specific where place. You wanted to accent. It's not just yeah. where you happen to run out, the next one's going to be mm. strong. Interesting. But you can choose it differently. Like, for example, that's one of the things, like the calligraphy should look balanced. And so if, if mm. one of your characters ended up going longer, mm. you might actually, the characters might shift a bit somewhat. And, and, and then you might choose to make it a little bit fatter somewhere mm. else mm. and not those original forms. I mean, my fault, cal calligraphy itself, it's a, it's it's a, a massive art form exactly. all it's, in it's, its, its own. own. So, yeah. you know, so for you guys to do this and then now put on a complete, not yeah. a completely different hat, but a very different hat. Yeah. So an ink painter really has to have quite a strong overlap in, yeah. in this. And so you, the other day, you see teacher. yourself as not being so strong on this yet. Yes. Okay, okay. But I haven't started at all. So, so, I, <laughs> so I was trying to be polite here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. You're being like Joseph Isne. <laughs> but okay, but there it is. It's, it's on, that's that's what you have no choice. You yeah. cannot keep avoiding this for much longer, right? So no, separate calligraphy lessons? Well, probably, but I think you cannot avoid it if you like the literature and the poetry side. I, lo I love the poetry, mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. at some point I would love mm -hmm. to the be able to use some of the old poetry yes, and maybe much, put it in much, my paintings. Okay. Um, but 
Okay. You don't have to, because also traditionally, sometimes when you have these old albums, very not very often, but sometimes the painter and the calligraphy were actually two different, different people, people, right? Interesting, interesting. So, so if you so were so to so see, so like, uh, I don't know, Nagasawa uh, uh, Josetsu uh, 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 album, like he would have done all of the all of the flowers, all of the, and then hired and then, uh, a professional or a different or artist. Interesting, did, uh, interesting. Did, interesting. So. That set of prints I made back in the 1980s and 90s, the Poet, the poet series, mm -hmm. that was published originally as a book back in 1775 or 1774 with the pictures, the poets themselves mm -hmm. done by Katsukawa Shuncho and the calligraphy done by Katsukawa Shuncho. He was apparently famous for both of them. It didn't seem to sell very well, so the publisher did a second edition with Shuncho's calligraphy ripped off, chopped off the blocks, and yeah. calligraphy by a noted calligrapher of the day. Yeah. And that book started to sell really well. So we did the same thing. So one person would have been noted for the picture drawings yeah. and a separate calligrapher. Yeah. Because even though the um, even though you you have to master the same tools, the mm. it requires you very, very long, I think, to master each of mm. them Interesting. to uh, Interesting. a high level. So I tossed this off earlier here in the yeah. West. We have a pen for drawing, a pencil for this, and a brush yeah. for painting, and it's the same blah, blah, blah in Japanese. But it's the same, but not the same. But it right? does help, like, because I, I knew how to hold the brush vertically, mm. and mm. Um, I was trying to really hold it when I was doing the characters. Mm. You know how to use the tool. So I, I already have a little bit yeah. of some yeah. of the muscles yeah. that are required yeah. for that, I would say. But, um, also, too, as an so outsider, it would seem to me that calligraphy, you're pretty much working with a vertical brush here, but down in this painting, I see this is like brush yeah, washes yeah. and stuff. The so brush. you have a lot of yeah. uh, horizontal strokes as well, yeah. Yeah. where yeah. You, you really, and you, you completely break apart. So now we're at 9.15 already, 9.16. Oh my God, so 9.15. It's real show and tell. Real show and tell. Oh my real god, we've only seen one of your paintings here. This was just a warm up. That's fine. We can go to your show and tell. All right, because yeah. I have no idea. This could be interesting, but it could be a bit of a. Uh... Well. 9.15. It's 9.15. I would have guessed it was coming up to 9 o'clock, I think. <laughs> no, that's not started. Time flies when you're having. A I good promise I would time. help you do just some work and actually. Yeah, we knew. No Look, work. give me a break. We knew where that was going. <laughs> give me. I'm not even. Not even. I have any. Uh, any uh, doubt about that one. We knew from the start where that was going. It's okay. It was going to be fun. That's what. That's we have scrolls. Why oh. did David buy scrolls? So. I did. Well, actually, if that turns out to be a wash, I have something else to show. Okay. I have a little slide for you. Things, there's 11 so of them. Just Thank you, Korengami. Thank you, Karen. I saw an auction a while back for scrolls, and the reason I bought it, which is not our normal thing, we don't do this here in our shop, is that it seems that a number of these are woodblock printed scrolls. Mm. And then I also saw my father's son was coming, so I thought we might have a chance here to overlap. And these are not, this is not like Sotheby's auction level of <laughs> scrolls. These are, uh, Hontani, this is a junk auction, but uh, I think there is both woodblock interest and or painting interest. What are we going to get? And I have no idea. The guy put in some terrible pictures. It's a woodblock. Oh, Nakazawa-san, thank you. It is a wood block. And what we have is a bunch of stuff that was sort of guidebook or, or uh, they came from temples and shrines. Yeah, People yeah. would pay money at the shrine to take home a talisman that was going to, yeah. you know, keep them good luck and stuff like that. And this sort of thing is what we have. And some of these wow. are actually going to be That's a wood pretty old. This is a wood block print mounted later on a scroll. I'm grabbing around here trying to find something that will tell me where this is, what shrine this is. I'm looking at it upside oh, down. Do we have any of the people who are experts on all of this? My father's saying, could you grab the, the package? Box. No, 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 no. Take, take the, whatever. The start opening some of this. There's too much here for me. You grab another one, start opening one, and see if we get lucky with a brush painting. Mm -hmm. Just have it. Do you need a knife? There's a knife here. Let's start. Hacking some of this open. 
wood block. I have no idea what date. This is old. It's roughly carved. This is not the kind of professional wood block thing that would have been made in a nice wood block workshop in Tokyo. It would have been made locally. The, the temple people or the shrine people would have hacked up some wood, got a local handyman. Wood block. Mm -hmm. Not sure. This is just a big thing. I think it's just a copy. That's also wood. Some of this might date quite back, you know. Oh, this is Ise. Yeah, we have a Buddhist figure. We have the lucky guys. We've got our Ebisu and Ebisu and Daikoku with his sea bream and his. Uh, his bags of money. Oh, it's lucky. Yep, it's lucky talisman stuff. Oops, from. This is just a copy. I'm sure. no. Let's keep digging. Let's keep digging. Let's nothing. keep digging. Maybe one for you, one for me. All right. So, 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 so. Man, this stuff has been around. Oh, this is some. Huh? This is also wood block. This is uh, calligraphy, but this is. Um, That's wood block. Wood yes. Block so, well. so, so. So Look at this, what a nice little treasure find we've got here. None of this stuff is worth anything. They would have been made in the bajillions of copies. Mm. The wood block is smacked up. It was probably smacked up the day it was carved. Very amateur work. Carved and printed locally. So this mm. one is probably easy to read. The characters are big enough. It's pretty. Let's nice. have a look. It's a shrine made in the show. The, the, the quality of the woodblock is, of course, terrible. It doesn't matter at all. Look at this. Oops, 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 oops. I, think, I think this is painted, maybe. It's been, uh, my no, guess is it's woodblock base painted on top. I think, let's have a look. It's a calligraphy. This part is wood block, but yeah. the painting looks like it's, it's hand painted. It's so hand painted. It's hand colored on top of wood block. Yeah. So the lines would be. Yes, printed, the, the right? black lines are wood block work, and the other wood is painted on top. Not your kind of painting, and nothing Not very delicate. It's bang, 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 <laughs> bang, 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 yeah, bang. So, so, so. But it's a funny, it's a tango, isn't it? Mm. Okay, let's keep going. Let's see if there are any questions. Ranga, oh, someone's asking for Rangak shower counter. Yeah, yeah. Visual experts. So, 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 so. <laughs> We're having same question. And this one. Well, actually, I'll give you that one. And I'll that one. I am on camera. I can't okay. see. Do you own any magic scrolls? Ooh. Mag magic scrolls? Are you asking me or you? And I don't know what they mean. I think, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, yeah, I said Lord Harry Potter, Hogwarts. I don't know. Is that an allusion to something I wouldn't. Oh, calligraphy here. This is. Oh, it's not a painting, it's just straight calligraphy. This is not woodblock. Like... It'll be sutras. It'll be religious sutras here. This is calligraphy. This is painting, I think, as well, colorful. I think this Pinted. is like a, is that a Ben 10? I don't know, is it woodblock base? I don't know, it. let's have a look, I can't see my... It's right in the center. Box of tools is gone. Did that paper that? looks almost like onion box. skin. Yes. It feels that way when you're touching it too. They're very, very dry. Are you looking? For I was looking for my, my little scope. I can't. See. It's not within reach. This could have all been painted. I'm sorry. It, I, I, I don't yeah. see. I don't see woodblock here. This is, I think, completely painted. It's completely painted, yeah, is I it? Believe. Or at least it's hiding anything that's in the mm, background mm, very well. Mm, mm, mm. And then this one. This one. Welcome I think is a, I Hello. Think, so I think this would yep. be. Hello. Hi, Ivana. We have an old shrine I know, from shrines and shrines to show. I know, mm. I know, I know, I 
And this is wood block in colors, three blocks. This is, these are all colors, wood block printed. Mm. Mm. So how old do you think these are? It's a couple they're all over the place. They're, they're, they are Meiji and or earlier. This is very similar, I think, wood block and then painted over. So some of, these, some of these could be Edo, Meiji, I don't see anything 20th mm -hmm. century. Mm -hmm. This stuff has been around. This is wood block with colors added by hand. The black lines are wood block. Some of the colors are woodblock. That green is woodblock. That brown is woodblock. The tan, the red, looks like it's painted on. I'm not yeah. sure. The vermilion, right? Yeah. No, this is woodblock. This is wood really no. It's woodblock. It's all woodblock. Even, really, really yep. Even the tan. Strokes, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Look at this. Super rough. And again, nothing like this would have been made in a real woodblock workshop in Tokyo or Edo. Oh, this wow. would be local stuff. People just you know at the shrine or temple figuring out how to do it themselves. I'm this is cool. This. Look at this. This one's also cool. This one. is very, I'm very, very happy to get this. Look at this. There's no way on earth to date this or to tell where it came from. Look at that. Wonderful. Are we still digging in this box? My God, oh, it just keeps still. going on and on and on. Look at this. Uh, Miyoshi Omikami. We should have the had you heard this. Surrounded by fire was likely Fudo Miyo. Usually depicted that way. Uh, God of Hell, the show, right? So, fire, so holding a sword, etc. We were back a few. Um, I mean, it was back a few. Back a few, maybe. yes. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry. And what do we have here? We have a, a. Is this a demon of some kind or a kami? I don't know. No idea. We've got a staff. This is a, a weapon. So would it like sword? I don't know. Looks like some kind of scythe, some kind of gym? weapon. Would it be? Is he trampling a demon? I'm not sure. Just that's his own leg. Yeah. Could it be like? Well, that's a stone. No. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm I don't sorry. Know my, I, don't I don't know. know my all my, all my soul. Ooh, good morning. Good morning. Another tango, I think. Look at this one. Another ancient little tattered oh, wreck. No. Look at this. Oh, Look at this. I would have guessed Shoki, but I don't know. I just that would have been my first guess. Ooh, Shoki, the demon queller. I would have yeah. guessed, but I don't know. But it says uh, it has a monk also. But that's a little joke to me. This is cool. This one's cool. Oh, that's we have one for you, at last. Is it brush? <laughs> uh, there's just, I think, two there more. There it is. In the box. But wait, stop, stop, stop. Is this, is this brush talks, my father? I think this is, I think that's real brush talks. Yes, but what's going on here? What, 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 what? Look at this. What's going on? Oh, that's just. Um, you just have, let me have a look. So this, you have an open brush. Are we, first, are we on camera? Go here. Yeah. Your fingers, okay? Where you go? So. This has got to be shoki to show. Yeah, I think okay, so. Okay, okay, the sword? Okay, uh, tell the me, sword. the brush, show me, show me, show me. So the brush, well, you, the, so this would have been with a flat brush and you just have very dry. Oh, 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 oh. And potentially that as well, actually, but... Mm, but it's the oh, same yeah, thing, just... To, 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 to. Look at the brush, look at the dry strokes here. Yeah. So the brush is almost totally dry, look at this, and yet it's squirreled. Yes. This looks, look at the... Look at the yeah. Yeah. Brush strokes, not carved. No. So if you have a very dry, in this case, you would have still a bit of water in the brush, which that's why you see a little bit of mm. blur at the mm. beginning, mm. but actually the tip is very dry. So you can still keep going, and you go actually, you can go probably very slow. But each hair, we've got, we've got one hair, the next hair, no, the no, next hair. No, 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 exactly. Hair. That's why you have a flat, you have a flat brush. So but they look like single lines. The because they all come from the same... The same brush and the same. Look at this. So it depends on the width of the brush. <laughs> and the stiffness and, and how much water. So, you know. so, for example, this could actually be a fude if you open it into this. A fan shape. What, yeah. you, you mean you would press it with your fingers? No, no, no. You, if you have it wet enough, you just do this okay. on the okay. plate okay. and it becomes like a little brush. You and know what this you reminds me of? This is like when you go to Hawaii and something, there's these guys doing stuff on the sidewalk with a brush and they do like... Oh, we, we saw one in Hong Kong. A guy was sitting on the, on the floor. With one brush he went... And it was a snake with all the scales and the wiggly yeah. stuff. Oh, and this looks like one of those things where some guy with a brush can do these wiggly things and it all looks yeah. much more difficult than it really actually is. There's a person that, what's this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it, it does look like it's a lot of the same brush. You know that sometimes you can actually also use, decide to, um, if you don't have too many tools, mm. you can actually just 
pull it apart with your fingers, mm. and then mm. you just they can't see you unless you're, uh, Sorry, mm -hmm. I need to show you on one camera. So you can you can just kind of open the fan, and if it's not too wet, it will stay a bit open, and then you just paint with that corner as well. Ah, so so this, and then you get it almost like a food day. Out of okay, a so this collection of little scrolls here, it's yeah. somebody or some family, some guy over the course of many years has gone to this shrine and that shrine and this shrine and he's yeah. bought the, the, the lucky amulets, he's bought the, the paintings and he's come back and I think probably himself at home, yeah. these are not professionally scroll mounted, these are just a piece of wood with some stuff glued onto it. Yeah. So I'm guessing that it's just a person. These are paper. Yeah, yeah. and these are, these are handmade. So I think we're working at a homemade collection of, uh, yeah, that's of stuff. Very, cool. so very, very cool. We're at 9.29 and I brought a little surprise for you, Dave. You, you're, you're the boss here. What, 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 what? I brought a little gift for you, which is actually an ink painting. <laughs> so, yesterday... In my hotel room, I had time. In your hotel paint. room? What? In my hotel room desk, I had the time to paint this little hawk sansui. on a pine. Hawk classic on a pine. hawk on a pine on a mountain. Classic. classic yeah. No space for calligraphy, <laughs> but you might be happy about that given my skills on calligraphy. And this is another seal you have, a smaller yes, one than we just saw. it's a smaller one, but it's the exact same, same, same kind of yeah. So you might want to get it just a little bit closer. Reflection. I'm not sure if people can see the hawk in her hotel room yesterday. Yes. <laughs> We're on, right? Show. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see it's a it's a reproduction from a different month's uh, class, but it was originally actually a long scroll. Uh -huh. So the same scroll that we saw horizontal, it would have been shrunk vertical, down. But so I shrunk so it so to so a so tanzaku. Okay. Cool. This is oh. so cool. Mm -hmm. What can so, I say? So thank that's you my very much. No, uh, thank you. It's always thank a pleasure. You. Thank you. <laughs> very nice. It's mm. absolutely going to become part it's of our collection here. It's so. not a wood block. For Do relax, <laughs> relax, 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 relax. I'm not that much of a prude. <laughs> so is it an original? Is it a reproduction? <laughs> Do we have to go there? Do we have to go? <laughs> this is the story of my life, oh, well, actually. So whatever, whatever. <laughs> Hey, it's been really fun having you. I, I hope, I don't know, you know, what's been interesting, what hasn't been interesting, I don't know. Hey, thank you very much for coming. Hope it was interesting right, for good, everyone. Good, good, good. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> thank you for having me. No, it's great fun what for me. I'm learning all the way through all these things as well. So I don't really know where this little Twitch room is going. It's recently, it's been shooting all over the place, but I'm having a ton of fun with it. As long as people keep coming back and it seems okay. So. Thank Very you cool. again. Get, Thank you. From, it's going to get chaos outside today, so this yeah, is festival day. <gasps> there are people outside, so, or I should have pulled so, up the camera uh, just a little bit. And I'm sure in the ask, today's festival day, yes. and there will be the later on this afternoon, there will be festival uh, Omikoshi coming down the street here. Yeah. And I think one of the previous years I did, I took my camera upstairs and left it on autopilot. And I might do that again later this afternoon if we can. So there's no official asking. announcement here. If I get a chance, I will put the camera upstairs. It'll probably be about two, one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon Japan time when the omikoshi is scheduled to come down this street, which is going to be difficult if you're in New York because you're going to be asleep. Asleep. But things are what they are. So there may be some gorilla streams later this afternoon as I get time and chance to do this. Stand by. Mufala san, thank you again. Thank you, Good. everyone. You know how to turn this Bye. off, right? I hope so. I wish to find we didn't Stop. turn it on an hour and a half ago. <laughs> <laughs>